Now the last part of this uh, backpropagation network is dealing with one example for it. So for backpropagation network, I have taken one simple example and I'll show you how this input pattern of uh, minus one, one, target is one and how one single iteration is done. Okay, I just take one single pattern and show how this working of uh, feed forward of input followed by backpropagation and weight updation works. Okay, so this is the example that I have taken. Uh, it is of a, a bipolar uh, activation function, bipolar symbolic activation function. Input pattern is going to be minus 1 and 1. The target value that is needed is 1. Okay, and this is the formula for uh, activation function and the inverse function for bipolar sigmoidal activation and you have the bias okay so these are all your bias value input neuron two input neurons and hidden layer one single hidden layer with q neurons in, uh, into it and finally only one output uh, layer one output neuron for it okay so now the first step is how this actually works so first input pattern is taken and this is fed into the value of input neuron. So the first unit of input neuron is x1. So x1 takes the first value of minus 1 and x2 takes the value of 1. And then what we do? We just process it feed forward. You just pass the value from input layer to the hidden layer. So first of all we will start with this z1. Okay, so is that one? You have to take all this constraint. When I am calculating the uh, in the function, the values for the z one, what all the input it takes. So here it receives input from the bias, from this x one and from this x two. I am going to find summation of everything. Okay, so a, uh, is it in one? It takes the value of the first value. Okay, so this is going to be your v zero one, v one one, and v two one. And from here it is V12 and V22. And here the weight vector is represented as W01 and W11. And here it is W21. And the bias value here is, uh, it is for the middle hidden layer, right? It is going to be V02. Okay. So in the hidden layer we have two neurons. I have to calculate the activation function for both the neurons. So this z1 takes the value from input from the bias x1 and x2. So we have to cumulatively accumulate all this. So it is 0, 1, v0, 1, x1 into v11, x1 into v11 and it takes the input from x2 into v21, x2 into v21. Okay, so just summation of everything. It is 0 0.34 bias. And x1 value is minus 1 into the 0 0.6. Minus 1 into 0 0.6. Minus 1 into 0 0.6. Added with 1 into minus 1. Okay, so with all the summation, you will have this z in 1. This is the input that is received for the z1. And once it receives this as the input summation, it has to find the output for it. Okay, output is the value that is applied after activation function. So we are going to apply, we are going to get the value of z1 by applying the function, activation function f of, f of this z in 1. Okay, so based on this formula, I have applied 1 minus this 0 0.4, minus of minus is plus. So 1 minus e power 0 0.4, 1 plus e power 0 0.4 and this is your output of z1. Okay, it takes all this value, apply it in the activation function, it gets the output of it. And similarly, we are going to proceed for z2 too. So Z2 is the input from bias that is V02, V02 and from X1 into V12, X1 into V12 and X2 into V22, X2 into V22. Okay, it's summation of all the values. So Z2 is 0 0.5 into, uh, sorry, 0 0.5 first value plus X1 value is minus 1. So minus 1 into minus 0 0.3, minus 1 into minus 0 0.3. And for this z2, it receives from 1 into 0 0.4. 1 into 0 0.4. Okay, so finally this will be calculated as 1.2. And after applying the activation function, the output that goes out of z2 will be 0 0.5370. Okay, so this is your first step. Input is passed from the first layer to the hidden layer. And next from hidden layer to the output layer, you have to have calculate the same. Okay, so while calculating it, the output of Z1 
So Y1 receives signal from the bias. First it is minus 0 0.2 followed by the output of Z1. Whatever is the value that we have calculated for this Z1 into this weight value 0 0.4 and whatever we have calculated for Z2 into this 0 0.1. Okay, so it is the bias value W101, the bias value of W01 and then the Z1 into W11. Z1 into W11, Z2 into W21. Okay, so add up everything. The initial bias value is minus 0 0.2 as it is and followed by Z1 value is this one. Add it with, oh sorry, multiplied with 0 0.4 and Z2 value is this one, 0 0.537 multiplied by the weight vector of 0 0.1. Okay, just by looking at this diagram, you will understand this input accumulation. Okay, feed forward of input is very easy. Just apply it in the formula, you will get the output of it. Okay, so finally we receive this as the output. After applying, so what we got it is y in 1 and after applying activation function, you will get y1 value. So y1 value is 0 0.1121. But this is the actual output that we receive by applying it in this network. But the actual output that is needed, actual target that is needed is 1. Okay, so what we have to do? We have to find the error function. So the next step is, so the initial step is feed forward of input which is completed. So next step is we have to calculate the back propagation of error. Finding the difference between the target and this y1, we are going to find the del k function for this and del j function for this and then we update all the weight vectors. Okay, so that will be the next step. Now the next step in the calculation is calculating the back, uh, error function. So initially what we did, like we pass the input from the input layer to hidden, hidden to output layer, we calculate what is the output, uh, actual output we got it over here. Now the next step is to check whether the output that we received and the target is same, if it is same, no problem. If it is different, then you have to calculate the error function based on the delta, uh, generalized delta rule. Okay, so now the output that we received over here for y1 is minus 0.112 but the target that is needed is 1. It's totally different. So we are going to calculate the error. We are going to back propagate the error. So from Y1, from the output layer to the hidden layer, first we have to calculate the error function and that is your del K. So del K is calculated as the target value minus the actual value that you have received. Target minus the actual value you have received followed by the inverse function, inverse activation function for your Y in K. Okay, so first we will calculate this, uh, we know what is Tk, target value is 1, what is Yk, Yk value is also given, this is the actual output. Now we have to calculate the inverse activation function for Y in K. So the inverse activation function based on your sigmoidal activation function, this is the formula for it. So here based on this formula, it is 1 by 2 plus 1 plus f of Y in, f of Y in is already we have calculated, what is f of Y in, f of Y in is this is your y in function and this is your function f of y in. It is minus 0 0.121. So 1 minus 0 0.121, 1 plus 0 0.121 and this is going to be your final y in k value. Now uh, you are going to calculate this del k value, the error function. Del k value is the target value 1 minus, minus of 0 0.121. So it is like 0 0.121 into this inverse activation function. So with this we got this error function. So once we got the error function, what is the next step? We know what is the error between these two layers. So once we calculated the error between these two layers, we have to find the change in weight for each and every. Like this layer is connected using three links. There are three weight vectors. For all the three vector, weight vectors, we have to find what is the change in weight that we are going to get it over here. Okay, and we already have the formula for it. So for uh, the first weight vector W11, it is alpha, alpha is your learning rate and it is already given as 0 0.25 and del1 value is this one and z1 value is already we have calculated. What is z1 value? It is 0 0.1974. Just multiply all, you will get the result of it. Okay, similarly for W21, for this weight vector, alpha value is 0 0.25, okay, and del1 value is also the same. But Z2 value is 0 0.5370, you will get the result and for your uh, bias value, you don't have a function value for it. So it is directly del and 
the activate uh, the air function okay so it is alpha and delta alpha is 0.5 and delta one value was taken okay so this is quite simple the reason is we already know what is the target that is needed for y1 okay so what is the exact target needed and we know the value for y1 we have subtracted it easily but when it comes to the next layer so this first layer of calculation is already done when it comes to the next layer we are going to have to calculate the uh, air function between the hidden layer and the input layer but the problem here is we doesn't know what exactly the target value that is needed for z1 or z2 hidden layer neurons we don't know what exactly the output so the formula goes like this we have to find what is del in j okay and it is based on the error function of your previous layer okay based on your y layer output layer we are going to calculate this del in j for each and every neuron of this layer you have two neurons for these two neurons we have to calculate what is del in j and this is the formula for calculating del in j okay so del in j is for all the output neurons we are going to back propagate it right so it is del k into the weight vector Okay, you are going to back propagate it, the del k, and into this weight vector. Okay, so when it comes to z one, you have only one output neuron, so that is going to be this z one. When you are back propagating it for your output layer, we have only one del k function, that is del one function. Okay, only one output neuron, so only one del function. So along with this, this weight vector, when you are multiplying, you will get the value for z one. Okay, so del one into w one what? And del one into w one two, del one into w one two for z two. Okay, so this is your del in one and del in two. So once it is done, you know how to apply your inverse activation function. So inverse activation function for z in one is one by two of f of x of z in one. F of x of z in one is zero point one nine seven four. Okay, so it is one by two of one plus zero point one nine seven. Okay, when you calculate, you will get this value. Okay, and for del in two also, it is the same. It is one by two of one plus f of z two. Okay, f of z in two, f of z in two is this one, z two. Okay, it is zero point five three seven zero. When you do, you will have the value of it. Okay, so once you have these values, next one is to calculate del one function of between these values, between the hidden layer and the input. Del one is for z one function. Okay, so del one is del in j of the first neuron that is 0.219 multiplied by inverse activation for emission for z in one the first neuron so you'll get 0.291 into 0.484 you'll get this value so this is your function for z1 between these neurons okay the neurons that are connected to z or z1 the layer the links that are connected to z1 the weight adaptation is based on The error function is calculated based on this del one, and for z two, it is going to be this value. Okay, z in two is zero point zero five nine four multiplied by this value. Okay, you will get this del two value. Okay, so once you got this error function, the weight adaptation value is like the same. Okay, so you will have uh, a lot of weight vectors over here. Just remember that it is not just easy. For Z one, you have three inputs. Okay, you have to know what is B zero one, one one, and two one. And for Z two, it is one two, two two, and zero two. So you have six units to be updated. So this is what I have been telling you. Okay, when that is a lot and lot of learnable parameters, even with the light modification of micro adjustment of uh, the weight vectors, the Learning will happen easily, like more accurately. I can call it as okay. So now the weight vector of V11 is calculated as alpha learning rate zero point five two del one value. This one value that is we have calculated and x one. So x one value is minus one. So x one is minus one for this value. So this is the output of it. So like this, you have to calculate. Just applying mere application of the formula, you will get all the results. B two one is alpha del one x two. Okay, so it is going to two one. It is going to get the input from x two. Okay, so it is going to be one. Alpha zero point one or zero point two five. Del one value is this one, and x two value is one. You will get this result. 
and for uh, zero one, for uh, zero one is a bias value. You don't have any uh, input to be given. Okay, so it is taken as one. So it is alpha into del one. So alpha value is zero point two five. Del one value is this. We get all the results like this. Okay, and the last step, you know, it is at weight updation. Weight updation is nothing but you have already taken all the weight vectors and the change in weight. When you add both, you will get it. For example, when I take B zero one. Okay, the new weight will be the old weight plus the change in weight. Zero or B zero one is this. Okay, so this is the change in weight that is planned for it. When you add both zero point three and zero point zero two six seven three, you will get the new weight for B zero one. And similarly, how to proceed for when it is or W two one for W two one the previous weight is zero point one. So the new weight will be zero point one. Plus, I can write it for this alone. Okay, so W one one new equal to W one one old plus del of W one one. This is the formula. So when you just apply, what is W one one new? It is zero point four plus del of W one one. The change in weight of W one one is deducted as. So it is going to be minus here zero point zero two seven one. When you calculate it, that will be your final weight. So for all the weights, you have to do it for all this W one one, W two one, W zero one, B one one, two one, zero one, B two one, one two, two two. Okay, you have to update all the weights. That is the old weight that is given over here plus the changing weight that you have calculated. Okay, so this is how a back propagation network works. Feed forward of input, calculation of error function, back propagation of error function. You you could have known it here, right? We calculate the error function from output to hidden, hidden to input layer. Okay, and finally the weight addition. Okay, thank you.